If you have followed my videos over the years, first of all, uh, send me some cash. Second, you probably have problems. Third, you probably heard me say, what we need is a uh, like a tube preamp with an amp built in, which would be an integrated amp, and a phono preamp in there, a dedicated phono preamp, not just a line level input. I need that, but with tubes and tone controls. Those are many boxes to check, and believe it or not, I have found numerous units that do almost all those things. Until today, I found one that I believe will do everything. Now, before you start telling me, no, 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 you should get an old Scott integrated amp from the 60s, or, yes, I realize that the, those might check the boxes as well. Those had tons and tons of other things in them uh, that could go wrong, capacitors, uh, you know, film capacitors, I forget the exact wording, but not only that, all sorts of features that I don't need. So uh, this, I think may fit the bill. And so this arrived today, Dayton Audio. Unlike a lot of the ones online that come from Asia that uh, are of questionable origin and, and build quality, some of which I've reviewed and some of which aren't bad, but don't have all these features. Unlike those, Dayton Audio, uh, you know, they're really well known for their budget speakers that uh, get some good reviews, really good in starter systems. So I thought, I cannot wait to try this as soon as I learned that this existed. And I saw reviews online from like last August. Uh, so I don't know how I missed this thing. But uh, one funny thing that I saw, caution, this component may contain sharp edges, handle carefully. That's encouraging. The other thing though that's encouraging is that, I don't like that, there's a certain Seattle-based gargantuan retailer that I'm not thrilled with. So let's hope this thing's okay. If not, it's gonna go back and uh, hopefully I'll get another one that's in good shape. So I will say while I'm opening this, I ordered, there's a certain LP I ordered, and I must have had to order it. I've never really had problems with brand new LPs, whether in the store or from this particular website. But this one that I ordered, it was, I'll just tell you, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Highlights Volume 1 on purple vinyl, because it has the Prince performance of uh, Well Mega Target Lewis. I have probably ordered six of those, and I keep telling them this is the reason I keep sending it back. They send it basically in uh, a paper thin envelope that goes around the record, no padding, nothing, and it shows up with bent corners and all sorts of stuff, so very irritating, anyhow. Uh, okay, so far, so far, looking good. Here's the instructions, quote unquote. I say quote unquote not to mock, but you know, today, most of it's online, you barely get anything in the box, and uh, that's pretty much what we got here. But this is all you need, you know, you don't need a huge book with this thing, I guess, in theory. Hey, they even put specs. That's pretty nice. You uh, usually have six U1 tubes and six F2 tubes. Interesting. Now you'll notice it says pre-amplifier tube, and I'm pretty sure that's because this is another one of these hybrids that has a solid state power amp section. I'm not seeing anything on here about tubes for the power amp, and uh, some people say that that's the worst combination, tube, preamp, and solid state power amp. Some say it's the best. For some reason, I have it in my head that that's what you're supposed to do. But a lot of folks say, no, you want a solid state preamp and, and a tube power amp. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Okay, this is, uh, well, does this come up? No, that'll be in a second. All right, power cord. Pretty uh, pretty stock stuff. You know, this thing, considering the price, I know there's a lot of people out there who are probably going to get one of these and then pay a quarter of the price again for a fancy power cord. Just saying. All right. Get this out. Balancing on one hand. And take put the box down, and boom. I can tell you already this thing feels pretty substantial. Padded sides, that's good. I like that. Okay. All right, I'll keep those. Maybe use them in the car as plates for food. Oh, look at this. They've even got inserts in there. So, see, Dayton Audio, they, uh, they take care of you. They know what they're doing. I probably, as a lot, could have ordered some of their speakers to test. I've never, I've never actually heard their speakers. I just know they have a really good reputation. I have so many budget pairs of speakers and bookshelf speakers. And I've just told myself the next time I buy a pair that's like bookshelf like those, I'm just going to get the LS3 5As and finally see what the fuss is all about. Okay, so this was taped shut on the edge. I don't know if you can see that. 
getting closer. Okay, so one of the inserts just came off with that, which is fine. And the other one. Yeah, see, they really did their homework with the packaging on this. This is very substantially made. Oh, and it's got meters. Who doesn't love those? They're not blue, but, you know, we don't want to get sued. Oh, they've got blue print, so that's pretty nice. Okay, they've even protected those. So this was very well packaged. I'm hoping that that damage I saw was just maybe somebody clumsy in a warehouse. Around back, we've got uh, speaker terminals. It does have, oh, it has a built-in DA converter, looks like, because it's got an optical and a coax inputs. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I was about to bust out my old CD player recently, and maybe now this is a good time to do that. I'll feed it through here. It's from 1989. It's that Technics one. Techniques. I always said Technics. Um, you can find that on a different video of mine. It has got a subwoofer output, which I don't really need, but it's nice to have. A USB in, and uh, an aux and a phono. So I've got a phono preamp, but I've got three turntables. So probably this will help me with a little bit of my <laughs> swapping around I always have to do. Over here... Voltage change, and I'm praying it's already on 110. And it is a cooling fan, which is a good sign. Hope that's not just there for show. I can't imagine it is, because again, Dayton Audio's got a pretty good rep. So, my beloved bass and treble on the front, and uh, power switch, volume, all that. Now let's see. Okay, because sometimes if this is if the power switch is already engaged. That tells you either nobody was paying attention to the factory or they were testing this one right before they sent it over. So let's now, here, I'll put this like this so you can get a good shot of it. I'm going to uh, do a star wipe and then I'll be back once this thing is actually hooked into the system. Okay, I had to move things around a little bit in the interest of short cables just to get this moving uh, before the little monsters you hear upstairs come down and start breaking this. So we're gonna switch it on for the very first time. Let's see what happens. Ooh, nice effect. Is it going to click? Okay, there. That's telling us it's ready. And I just realized I don't know how to change the inputs on this. Hmm. I don't think there was a remote in the box. Therefore, oh wait, must be these. I didn't see those buttons on any of them. Oh, there's an input button. Uh, there's forward, but I assume that these are relate. Well, you know what? Remember that manual that I was like, whatever. <laughs> Let's see what those buttons do. Underneath, da, 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 five, six, seven, eight. Those would be play, pause, previous track, next track. Okay, so I guess that's when uh, you have some sort of device hooked up by USB. Did I point out the USB on the back? Well, there is one. So that's what those are for, but this is for input. So, nope. There we go. Oh, and did you see that? It was pretty smart. It skipped. Yeah, it skipped right up because it knew there's none of these. These aren't connected. It's like computers are the way for the future. Okay, I'm going to try the first record I played, the first song. Uh, my dad had just given me his copy of Let It Be, the original from 1970. Uh, this is when I was in middle school, and I just got my first real turntable. I used Techniques SLB3 from a friend. And so that was the first thing I put on. Side two, I've got a feeling, so I figured. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I do that fairly often with that record, and uh, this time it's a British pressing. I mean, you're not gonna be able to tell over a phone, but just so you know, that's why I'm picking it. Also, so we can get sued. Now with no burn in, and I have not touched the tone controls yet, it's sounding, well, not great. <laughs> kind of, you know, it's clear and stuff, but it doesn't sound great. There's not a lot of bass or anything, and I think I can tell the bass is turned almost all the way down. So let's see what happens. Treble is definitely doing its job. Now let's see what happens when we crank the bass. Oh, very nice. A little rubbery, the bass, but you know, better than nothing. It's definitely better than when we first turned it on, and this unit hasn't been burnt in. Okay, moved it again, as you can see. Uh, the limiting factor in all these cases was the ground wires, so I moved some things around to make this a little easier. Now, what we were just listening to was that song on this turntable, which has a very nice Audio-Technic cartridge, very well balanced, whatnot, accurate. This one has this Shure SC35C, which has been uh, lauded for its bass response, so basically it gets more bass. Uh, and I thought that, well, okay, I'll try it on, uh, on this one and, and see, maybe this will give me a little bit more bass. The reason for that is, and you can stop to see over here, but next to this, see that? This is what I've been using before. 
At the very bottom, that's an integrated amp, one of those digital ones, decent. Uh, you're probably thinking, what? How dare you could use that with these nice turntables? Well, stuff has been getting moved around and things, and this was just an easy way to go for now. Uh, above that is a shit EQ. Shkite, sorry. I'm saying it like that so we don't get in any trouble for young people watching. I know that's wrong. Above that is their Phono preamp. Um, this was a switcher. It's a long story. Uh, I like the EQ and the way it sounded. This new unit does not have any provision for a tape loop where I could put the EQ in line and switch it in and out. So what I'll end up probably having to do is one of these tables will go direct into the new Dayton audio unit and one of them will go through the uh, fun processing and into the aux input of this. And if I can find a phono preamp with a USB or something, then uh, maybe the Gerard, which you've seen in a different video, maybe that'll go into, uh, into that. We'll see, I don't know. I don't know which table's going with what or where, but uh, for now, that's kind of what I'm thinking might end up happening. Anyway, let's flip this on again because I like watching that. Ooh. And we will see what happens when we listen to the same song with this extra bass cartridge. A little bit of an improvement, at least as far as the bass goes. Uh, obviously, overall, the, the sound is not quite as focused as it was on here. But uh, again, I don't understand people who don't have tone controls, but whatever. One other thing I noticed, nice big scratch there above, just below the volume. You can probably barely see it. That's irritating. Uh, the other thing I noticed earlier when I shut this off and after I stopped the camera was this. Ready? Okay, watch. Goes out immediately. The sound goes out immediately. So definitely that output stage is not tubed. It is solid state, which is fine. For all I know, it's uh, the digital thing that we've also got back here. and in this happy little fellow that's very similar, same technology. But either way, so far I'm pleased. I'm gonna play around with this and um, let's do another star wipe and then we'll come back at some point and tell you exactly how things have been going. Well, I've lived with this unit for a few days. Uh, I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels. I'm not 100% on the way it sounds and I think that's because I prefer a little bit more in your face sound. I like extra bass as we've seen with me having basically two EQs in series and I didn't name the speakers they're Yamaha NS 70 T's which are very similar to the NS 690 which is a very well regarded speaker so I think that's just me my personal taste growing up playing the drums playing bass that's what I want to hear more of this Dayton audio unit is probably maybe a little too gentle or accurate for someone like me for my taste and maybe that's the strength of tubes and that's why I've never really been able to to embrace tubes for whatever reason. I'm sure I'll get flamed by a lot of audiophile purists, but that's the way I feel. That said, this is not a bad unit, uh, even despite the little scratch on the volume control and the way the box showed up. Uh, I did notice later that looking at the two middle tube sockets head on, uh, they're a little bit crooked. But for this price, you really can't beat the number of features that are in here. The features that it doesn't have are a mono switch a balance control, neither of which is essential, uh, I can live without, or a uh, tape loop. And if it had a tape loop, I could put the EQ in series, or I could put a couple Y cables and make a mono switch out of that. But unfortunately, doesn't have any of those provisions. The other thing it has that I think might have satisfied my need for a more in-your-face sound would be a loudness switch. But that's something that we haven't really seen since, oh, I'd say the 1970s, early 80s. After that, those kind of went out of favor. So. I would give this unit a uh, B, maybe a B plus. Uh, for my purposes, I'm not sure that I'll hang on to it, but I did enjoy seeing it, playing with it, and uh, maybe Dayton Audio can make you know, an upgraded unit, the next level up that has some of those things incorporated that I mentioned, and uh, then it would be a, a slam dunk. Oh, and if one last thing, if they want to make the meters blue and give it a silver face, so much the better. <laughs>